Fox Sports. We are Chase Field here in the Valley. The Arizona Diamondbacks and San Francisco Giants ready to take the field here. Crowd still filing in. A big NL West rivalry. Every game this season has been dramatic. And we expect nothing less here tonight at Chase Field. Good evening from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume, Bob Brentley along the way. The Giants and Diamondbacks set here, Bob, to play game two of this three-game series. And the Giants on the mound tonight have one of the best young pitchers in baseball, Madison Bumgarner. And the Diamondbacks saw him last week at AT AT&T Park. And, yes, Arizona ended up winning the game three, two, and ten innings. But Bumgarner was a handful. Well, I'll tell you, that's, uh, that's not an understatement. This guy is one of the best pitchers in the game, a very young guy, just still learning his chops here at the major league level, but he has tremendous stuff, a tremendous competitive nature out there on the mound. Hits are hard to come by. Runs are even harder to come by against Madison Bumgarner. Big swooping lefty with an unusual delivery at one point last week. He retired 14 in a row and 18 of 19. So they'll have to solve the riddle of Madison Bumgarner here tonight. One way, Bob, the Diamondbacks have done that all year long uh, is with defense. The offense has uh, come and gone. Some of the pitchers have struggled. But throughout this season, the defense has been nothing less than outstanding. Yeah, you'd like to think that that is one constant. The Diamondbacks have played good defense all around the Diamond. Cliff Pennington with two errors playing shortstop handles a lot of ground balls. That's the most on the team. Everybody else has played nearly flawless defense, not only making the spectacular plays, but making the routine plays with ease. Cody Ross, Gerardo Parra, infielders, outfielders. Josh Wilson has played an excellent second base. Josh is in the lineup tonight. When we come back, much more here from Chase Field as the D-backs and Giants get ready for game two of this three-game series. We've talked about Madison Bumgarner. What about the Diamondback starter tonight? Can Trevor Cahill keep it going? Find out when we come back here on Fox Sports Arizona.
business cards, brochures, and more. We can print that. And by George Brazil. George Brazil guarantees the lowest price on a new AC system. Call George today. It's d Baseball live on Fox Sports Arizona. Game two of this three-game showdown against the world champion Giants. A pair of a matchup of a pair of outstanding young pitchers in this game for the Giants Madison Bumgarner as you just saw for the D-backs Trevor Cahill so far this season uh, Trevor Cahill it's kind of been a mixed bag he's known for having absolutely sensational stuff tons of movement on his uh, on his pitches but here's the rub both Miguel Montero and Will Nieves say Cahill is absolutely lights out during warm-up session in the bullpen but sometimes that doesn't always translate to the game last two seasons Cahill with a record of eight and nine in 20 games ERA at 4.31 and look at the work in the first inning here at Chase the ERA jumps up close to six opposing teams hitting 277 the key according to Miggy is trusting his stuff pitching right at him you know he's a he's a guy who got incredible stuff I mean uh, if you tell if you ask me who's uh, the nastiest starting pitcher in our rotation I'm definitely going to say him because I think his ball moved too much then it's going to be hard to guy make a solid contact of him. Um, the warm-ups are his Cy Young, no doubt about it in my mind. I mean, he's nasty, super nasty. Yeah, we'll see how that unfolds tonight. As those guys said, he is really, really has his stuff together when it comes to the warm-up session, but he's got to make it happen in the first inning. Well, last night, Chase Field was a launching pad. Four long balls, including three in one inning for the Diamondbacks. B.B. and Burt have the call on Fox Sports Arizona after the break. Got his first win of the season, but he was out there struggling somewhat despite the fact he allowed just four hits in five innings. He walked four, and Bob needed 105 pitches just to sort of crawl to the finish line and get through that fifth inning. Yeah, really uncharacteristic. You'd like to see Trevor pound that bottom part of the strike zone, get some easy outs on ground balls. Bruce Bochy in his seventh season as the Giants manager, hoping to go nine innings tonight. He got ejected from the ball game last night, arguing a call at first base. And he was right, but he lost the argument. 
Giants lineup. They weren't sure about Pablo Sandoval, who had to leave the game last night midway through with an elbow issue. It's been something the Panda has been battling all spring long, but he is in there as of right now. Yeah, they uh, had him in the initial lineup. They took a good look at him in batting practice today, made some throws across the diamond to first. He declared himself ready to go. Same lineup we saw from the Giants in the ball game last night. Trevor Cahill last time out, 105 pitches, only 60 for strikes. He is our Arizona Ford Diamondback starting pitcher, and the key for him tonight will be command. Does he know where it's going when he throws it, and can he command it? d back six and three in their last nine. Second and three here against the Giants. On this seven-game homestand, Angel Pagan steps in. We're underway here at Chase Field on a gorgeous Tuesday night. Now this may be an oversimplification, partner, but if he would throw that pitch all night long, I think he'd have a great ball game. That well, his stuff moves so much, just throw it in there, let it do it right there. There's a base hit. I mean, some of those are going to get through with Prado in at third, but let it do its thing, throw some ground balls, pitch efficiency. He's got so much movement on that sinking fastball. I mean, when hitters make contact, they rarely get any elevation whatsoever. It's usually a ground ball. Let your defense work behind you. And as we chronicled in the open of the show, the Diamondbacks' defense has been up to the task every day. Roof open, panels open. Nice warm night here. Marco Scudero steps in. 237, no homers and four RBI. He was on base four times last night. Shows bunt. Cahill will take it. Plays to first. Pagan up to second with a one out. Defensively for the Diamondbacks, Martin Prado back at third tonight. Got the right handed hitters in there tonight with A.J. Pollock in center. Alfredo Marte in left field. Josh Wilson playing second base tonight. As you mentioned, Prado moves over to third. His versatility allows Kirk Gibson to play Russian roulette with this lineup against left handed pitchers. So Prado at third and with the left-hander Madison Bumgarner starting for the Giants. A rare night off for Gerardo Parra after his 13-game hit streak ended last night. Here is the Panda. Nine hits in his last 14 at-bats. First pitch swinging high in the air, left side. Marte giving chase foul ground. He's there. That'll work. You mentioned Parra out of the lineup tonight, a well-deserved rest, although I have a feeling he'll be in there before the evening is over. But Parra, lifetime 0 for 10 with five strikeouts against Madison Bumgarner. So if you're going to give him a day off, this would appear to be a good one. That looks like the face that he generally makes when he's not in the lineup. <laughs> he, he, he wants to be out there. <laughs> Buster Posey on base four times last night. A single, three walks, one of which was intentional. Hitting 406 over what is now a 10-game hit streak. Three doubles, three homers, and nine RBI during the 10-game streak. There's strike one from Trevor Cahill, and that will go a long way tonight. The numbers for Buster during this 10-game streak. He's in there at 291 on the year, three homers and 14 RBI. Look at the movement right there. Just keep pounding it down there at the bottom of the zone. Watch the action on this pitch. Down and into the righty. Right there, that is a two-seam fastball. From the right-hand pitcher to the right-hand hitter, breaking down and in. That pitch is filthy. Struck him out. Trevor Cahill has it rolling so far. A seven-pitch first inning. They strand the leadoff hit. We'll go bottom one here at Chase.
here. And now the Diamondbacks will face the outstanding young lefty for the San Francisco Giants, Madison Bumgarner. And this is the lineup that Kurt Gibson has put together tonight. A.J. Pollock in the leadoff spot and Gerardo Parra, as we mentioned, getting the night off. Well, as you might imagine, not a lot of great numbers against Madison Bumgarner. Paul Goldschmidt, three for nine with a homer. A.J. Pollock, three for six with a homer. But many right-handed hitters as Kurt Gibson could get in the lineup tonight. And with Bumgarner, the number to look at is the whip on the bottom there. It is outstanding. That is walks plus hits divided by innings pitched. It measures how many base runners a pitcher allows. A one whip is generally considered great, so less than one is really great. A.J. Pollock to lead it off. There's the strike, says Bill Miller behind the plate. A.J. in there at 266. Beautiful sunset over downtown Phoenix here. Three homers and 10 RBI. He had the night off here last night. As you might expect, Bumgarner, like a lot of the good pitchers in the game, uh, if you're going to get him, you're probably better off trying to get to him early. Opponent's batting average through his first 25 pitches of the game is 357. After that, it drops down under 100 for each 25-pitch segment. Well, we saw the example of that, Bob, as we mentioned in the open when they faced this guy last week in San Francisco. That was the Wednesday afternoon getaway day game. Baumgartner had a couple of hiccups in the first two innings. After that, he set down 14 straight Diamondbacks and 18 of 19. It was up and down, up and down, up and down. Finally, D-backs came back and won it late, 3-2 and 10. Here's the 1-2. Right, good shot of that delivery from Madison Bumgarner. Kind of shows you the ball behind his back and then a real long arm slinging action. Low three quarters delivery kind of throws across his body. Really gives the hitter a lot of deception. Sneaky quick with the fastball. Good late movement on his breaking pitches. Has a really good straight changeup. A great shot there from the batter's box suite. Hard to short, Brandon Crawford. There you go. Well away. Defensively for the Giants, same lineup we saw last night. Solid, I would say, a spectacular defensive team, but they make most of the plays they're supposed to. Pablo Sandoval with the gimpy right elbow may be a little bit of a liability down there at third base tonight. Martin Prado back in the two hole here after his great night last night. And you had to be encouraged with what you saw from Martin last night. Two for five, a single and a home run, his fourth of the year. It was Prado's first multi-hit game since April 12th. He's in there at 216, four homers now, and eight RBI. He has scored 18 runs in 25 games. After a couple of appearances in the leadoff spot. Look at Martin Prado last night. The third of three home runs in the one inning off Matt Cain, and that is not a cheapie. Uh, you can clearly tell his approach changes at the plate uh, when there's nobody on base as opposed to when he has a runner at first or a runner at second where he feels like his primary responsibility is to move that runner. When he's uh, free to go up there and swing at whatever he sees and hit it to wherever it's pitched, uh, he's got good power. Yeah, the D-back staff said the, the effort to put him in the leadoff spot was indeed a chance to let him get up there and just swing the bat free and easy. Don't worry about hitting behind the runner and advancing the leadoff man on base. Just get up there and do your thing, and it helped. Well, since Martin Prado hit a home run last night, now is a good time to remind you that Every time a Diamondbacks player hits a home run this season, Fulton Homes donates $150 to Central Arizona Mountain Rescue. Well, Kirk Gibson said today Martin Prado's offensive struggles, not so much a mechanical issue. Instead, Gibby said it's probably a little more of him pressing. Part of that is what happens behind the scenes, and Gibby said... He's noticed that Martin wants to work his way out of it, and sometimes you have to back off that just a bit. 
And Kirk Gibson has said he's had to talk to Prado about that. You know, cut your workload. In fact, cut it in half. Give yourself a break here because he has really been pressing. And Gibby's a firm believer in that. We saw it back in spring training. He feels like you go hard for two or three days and then a little bit of a breather day. Maybe don't do quite as many drills. Maybe don't take quite as many cuts in the batting cage. He's worked it full now, three and two, because sometimes, Bob, I imagine that you can just keep digging the hole a little deeper when you get in that pattern. And you can get into some bad habits, too. When you're struggling, you have a tendency to change things drastically when the reality is it's very subtle changes to your swing or to your delivery on the mound for a pitcher. Struck him out. Two down here in the first. But it doesn't happen overnight or with one swing, that's for sure. Nasty back foot slider that time. Started it over the inside part of the plate. Looked like a very hittable pitch. And by the time Prado got his bat to the hitting zone, it nearly hit him in the back foot. Here's Paul Goldschmidt on base twice last night. Walked twice and struck out twice. Goldie get 299. Five homers and 18 RBI. Goldschmidt so far, three for 18 on the homestand. Well, it's too bad we don't have smell a vision partner. I'll tell you, as they're popping popcorn somewhere right below us here in the ballpark. It is. Well, there, everything's open here, and there's a. Dennis has got an eyeball out. <laughs> 1-1 one, one now. You know, some unusual splits with Goldie here. So far this year, I mean, look at this. 250s, 250 versus lefties. This is just this season. 319 versus righties. That's the complete opposite of last year. I mean, last season... Paul Goldschmidt's platoon splits 343 against lefties 257 versus right hand pitchers. But now this year as we showed you 319 versus righties 250 against lefties. It's backwards. High in the air to right. Hunter Pence coming in coming in. We are through one on a nice night here at Chase and a good pitching matchup so far. No score, Giants and Diamondbacks. Ram Trucks, proud partner of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And by Gila River, another proud partner of the Arizona Diamondbacks.
Bob Renly has ordered Dennis, uh -huh. who runs our booth up here, down to visit Mike and Sharon at Cactus Corn. And, uh, BB, that is on the way here, courtesy of Dennis and Mike and Sharon down That'll there. will be about half as much of it by the time he makes it up here to the booth. <laughs> it usually is. <laughs> Hunter Pence, Greg Orblanco, Brandon Crawford here in the second against Trevor Cahill, who had a sensational start. Seven pitches. Lead-off single to Pagan, and then stranded him on the bases here. So, so far, so good for Trevor. Yeah, did give up that leadoff hit to Pagan, which follows the trend, unfortunately, for Trevor Cahill this season. Batters leading off an inning 11 for 30 with five extra base hits. But the thing about that hit was it didn't bother me. Prado was in at third. It was a ground ball, which he is going to throw, and some of those are going to get through. Uh, but the important thing to me was the pitch was moving. All his stuff was. He was quick, efficient, and had command. To shortstop, Cliff Pennington. Pence gets up the line pretty good. One down. Now yeah, those seeing eye base hits, uh, we used to call them the curse of a sinker ball pitcher. Occasionally they're going to find holes. You can't have defenders everywhere the ball is hit, but more often than not, uh, Trevor Cahill is going to find that those ground balls are going to go right into an infielder's glove. Gregor Blanco starting in left for the second game in a row. He was on base twice last night. Single, walk, an RBI, and he scored a run. Watch out for that little swinging bun he likes to use. Sort of gets a running start in the box and takes a little half swing at it. Very effective. 281. No homers, 5 RBI. Paul Goldschmidt. See, this is when Trevor Cahill is going good. This is what it looks like. Quick, efficient ground balls. The defense is involved. And most importantly, perhaps, Bob, based on the way things went for Trevor last time, so far, 13 pitches, 12 for strikes. That's a beautiful thing. Only Jake Westbrook pitching for the Cardinals last year had more ground balls to fly ball ratio than Trevor Cahill. 2.54 ground balls for every fly ball. Brandon Crawford looks at ball one. 281, five homers and 14 RBI. Quick outs, efficient pitch to contact, and a 1-2-3 second for Trevor Cahill, who has thrown only 14 pitches through two innings. That'll work. Now the D-backs will step in here bottom two against Madison Bumgardner, who worked a 1-2-3 first. Cody Ross, Miguel Montero, and Alfredo Marte, 4-5-6. and six. Cody on base twice last night. Single, a walk, he scored a run. Look out! Look out. No one in 
manager. That's the important thing. And now we'll fight over the souvenir. Everybody okay? It's got to be something when that young man walks uh, home, comes through the door holding a big bat. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> You'll never believe. <laughs> Cody Ross in training for the hammer throw in the Olympics. Hey, he got some good distance on that one. And we'll go to the black bat. He changed up a bit here. Cody four for 16 on the homestand with three RBIs. Over his last 14 games, Cody hitting 302, three doubles and a triple. Baumgartner. They don't get any easier than that. One away. Hey, fans, we invite you to play Kachinko by signing up at one of the 16 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season home game. And when you play, you get that signed game piece you get to take home with it. Miguel Montero now. Miggy at 198, a homer in 10 RBI. 0 for 4 last night with three strikeouts. And part of the issue for the D-backs, Bob, last night was the fact that three of the four hitters, Goldie and Miggy, five strikeouts in eight plate appearances. And that's where the offense just kind of sputtered last night. And yeah, we talked about it last night. We've actually talked about the last couple of games. Miggy uh, really getting close. He's starting to hit some balls right on the button, unfortunately, right at defenders. Tough task tonight against the lefty Bumgarner, but uh, talk to Miggy before the ball game. He feels very good where he's at at the plate right now. He knows that eventually they'll start dropping in. Tonight would be a good night to start. He has hit in five of the last seven overall. And he could have a lot more than that, as you mentioned. That one's in the dirt, two and one. That's a, a tough thing for a young hitter to understand that you can't control results. All you can do is control your effort and your preparation. Make sure your mechanics are good. You do that by taking a little extra batting practice, watching some video. But once you put that ball in play, you can't control where it goes. This one goes high in the air to left field. Blanco underneath. That's the second out. Miguel Montero once again hits it right at somebody. Here he is. You started getting a little frustrated, like, okay, what's going on now? I mean, really? Are they going to catch every single ball? And, uh, but you know what? I got to I gotta keep my composure. I gotta, just got to keep going. I mean, it's still five months to go. I was just sit down yesterday, and I was realizing, I mean, come on, really? Still 400 more bats for me. That's our quarter of the game brought to you by Geico. I don't blame him for just standing there and going, really? Really? The one that Fowler caught over the weekend in right center. Alfredo Marte, it's getting there, close. Marte at 205, four RBIs, eight for 39 this year in 20 games. Two for seven on the homestand with a double and an RBI. Now, if you've ever wondered who works the scoreboard here at Chase Field, there it's not just a you know a guy with a little phone or something. It takes, well, as they say, it takes a village. Or in this case, a control room. And it looks a little something like this. This is a, the room from which they operate the giant scoreboard out there. And there's a whole team of people coming up with this stuff to keep everybody informed and entertained. <laughs> Some good yucks in there. Yeah, it's a little different than that scoreboard at your local sandlot where you have ball strikes and outs and, you know, <laughs> home and away score. Man, go in there and pull a couple of plugs and turn off the power to the entire state. <laughs> it takes it just to power that thing up. That is one of the best scoreboards in baseball. Part of the great hitters background. So many people love to hit here. And the great batter's eye behind the pitcher. He's got the dark colored flat essentially wall. Hey, there, there's a Greg Schulte bobblehead. The governor. Bobblehead collection up there as well. They put together a nice uh, nice exhibit. Marte strikes out. Second strikeout of the game for Madison Bumgarner. Behind the scenes here at Chase as we get set to start the top of the third.
Yeah, look at that. Now that's a marriage that works. She is not happy, the Giant fan. No, now she's happy. So our question tonight on the AT&T Twitter poll, what jersey would you least like to see your spouse wearing? Just put the hashtag FSAZ in front of either Giants, Dodgers, Rockies, or Padres and tweet your vote to at Fox Sports Arizona, and we'll have the results later in the game. And they Somehow they make it work. We lead the league in love. Uh, here's Brandon Belt, so look out. This guy has been a handful. Two for four last night with the two biggest hits of the game. Home run in the second, and then the big two-run single in the eighth that broke up the 4-4 tie. 244, two homers and 11 RBI. That one's foul, and he's down 0-2. But the issue is, this is last night. This is the one that essentially won it off Brad Ziggler. It's ground ball right back up the middle of the field, but it seems like Brandon Belt is always at the plate in crucial situations in the game, and he has come through in a big way for the Giants this year. That one's upstairs. Against Arizona just this year, Brandon Belt 6 for 11. Two homers, six RBIs in four games. As you can see, he's been a problem. Against all other teams, he has not been a problem. Just the Diamondbacks. In fact, he's their first baseman, and he's hitting eighth again because it's been a struggle. He had a sensational spring training. Crazy good Cactus League numbers. And as soon as they started playing for real, it just stopped working, except against the Diamondbacks. Straight up in the air. This may have a play. Montero comes back in, and Mickey is there. That drifted back toward the field of play, and it worked out. So they finally figure out a way to retire Brandon Belt. Nice play by Miggy to stay with that one. It looked like it was going to be well up into the stands uh, when that ball reached its apex. A little breeze circling around here inside the ballpark. Pushed it back toward the field of play. Miggy right there to make the catch. Madison Bumgarner, he can hit two for eight with a couple of walks this year. How are you on pop-ups? Well, I played... 81 games a year at Candlestick Park. So, <laughs> so that answers I caught your question. Most of them. <laughs> I was comfortable catching pop ups, but uh, you throw in that swirling wind and the bright sun during the day games, and uh, it, it wasn't easy. There's Be definitely an art to it. You know, there's a lot of English on that ball when it's popped straight up in the air like that, and it. It's always going to come back toward the field of play because of the spin on the ball. And you're up against really the infield bowl, as it were, and that just creates the swirling winds, and that ball gets right up in the middle of it. You've got a glove that really isn't designed for catching fly balls. It's heavily padded to catch 90 and 95 mile per hour pitches. Got all that gear on. It's really tough. <laughs> did he go around? Yes, he did. There's the strikeout. Second for Trevor Cahill. Two down here in the third, and if you've ever wondered what it's like to be a, a sports writer, this is a shot of the fourth estate. That's a live look at the press box here at Chase Field. Everyone diligently working. That's where it all happens. Some of the Diamondback staffers right there. Casey, you can follow him on Twitter. Angel Pagan let off the game with a single. Another first pitch strike from Trevor Cahill. Pagan 0 for 5 last night. Another pop up. Prado at third. Trevor Cahill has got it figured out. He is rolling. He's retired the last nine he's faced. The Giants have just made out nine times in a row.
Nations and Fry's food stores back and ready to take you to a D-backs game. Stop by this month's participating Gilbert Cox retail store or Fry's food store in Prescott Valley and enter to win two seats on the Fan Express bus. Information, you can find it at foxsportsarizona.com. Josh Wilson, Cliff Pennington, and Trevor Cahill here against Madison Bumgarner in the third. Bumgarner has retired the first six he's faced with two strikeouts on a gorgeous night here at Chase. Just beautiful. One and one now. Wilson not in the lineup here last night. Josh at 231, two RBI. He is six for 26 in 13 games. But in the games in which Wilson has started this year, he's six for 23. He's ahead two and one. Three for seven over his last two games. Everything Madison Bumgarner throws primarily will be fastball slider. As Bob mentioned, there's a change that he mixes in a little bit of the time. But mostly it's all fastballs and a lot of sliders. In fact, the change up for Bumgarner at 12% this year. He'll break that out against a power hitting right handed hitter faded off that outside corner try to get some swings and misses but you're absolutely right he commands that fastball on both sides of the plate commands the slider on both sides of the plate. Fastball slider 77 percent of the time this year. To second base Marco Scudero is there. One away here in the third. Anytime the D-back scores six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. He scores six against Madison Bumgarner. That ought to be worth a bunch of tacos. Cliff Pennington looked good here last night. Two for four, a double and a single for Cliff. Batting right-handed against the lefty Bumgarner. There's a strike 0-1. Pennington three for 13 in the homestand, including two walks. And Cliff has really taken to the high socks. Oh, I always love this view. This is what sold me on baseball forever at Cleveland Municipal Stadium, coming out the runway and seeing that beautiful green field down below. I was hooked. Base hit for Cliff Pennington. It gets into left. There's the first hit of the night for the Diamondbacks. That after Bumgarner had retired the first seven he faced. Pitcher number 35, Trevor Cahill. Good firm low line drive through that left side of the infield just past a diving Brandon Crawford. It's tough for the Giants defensively to really shift one direction or the other because, as we mentioned, Bumgarner commands both sides of the plate so well, you don't want to limit him. So uh, defensively, the Giants play everybody almost straight up. Scudero shaded way over toward first at second base, so if Cahill can somehow shoot this up the middle if he's not bunting, and he is bunting, Sandoval crashes at third, Belt has it at first, no play at second. Cahill advances the runner. Pennington to second with two outs. I'm sorry, I, it sounded a little strange. You said you fell in love with baseball by going to Cleveland Municipal Stadium. Do I, the, the green grass? I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, did you go to a different Cleveland than I did? No, back in the but day? that was back in the day. That was a long time ago. But I, I mean any ballpark. You know, sure. you walk around the concourse and you come up that tunnel and all of a sudden, boom, there it is in front of you. It just takes your breath away. A.J. Pollock grounded out his first time up. Well, if you could scratch one across here against Bumgarner, that would have yeah. really Down the line, Sandoval is there, and the Panda makes the play. But the D-backs finally break through to get their first hit of the game. Pablo Sandoval ends the third. We go to the fourth, no score.
between a pair of the game's outstanding young arms. Trevor Cahill has been very, very good so far. You heard it at the top of our show, Miguel Montero talking about how good Trevor is in his warm-up session out in the bullpen. Will Nieves, the backup catcher, also echoing those sentiments. They, they both are telling him, you've got tremendous stuff. Trust your stuff and also trust this defense behind you. The D-backs uh, lead all of Major League Baseball in terms of defensive fielding percentage. And so it looks like Trevor is starting to buy into that and trusting his catchers and just trusting his stuff not to overthrow it. And ground balls are part of it and one goes up the middle. Absolutely right, Brad. Thanks very much. Yeah, Trevor Cahill had retired nine straight after the leadoff single by Pagan. And, Bob, that's another curse of the sinker ball pitcher right there. It happens. Uh, the good news is you may come back on the next pitch, get another ground ball right at one of your defenders, and get that double play you're looking for. But those numbers we just showed you were absolutely key here. The command, 29 pitches, 23 for strikes. That's what's been lacking. And if he can solve that issue, and it's a big one, he'll be well on his way. So leadoff man on. Speaking of big issues, here's Pablo Sandoval. <laughs> Certainly a double play candidate. If Cahill can induce him to hit that ball on the ground somewhere. 23 times last year, opponents grounded into double plays with Cahill on the mound. Boy, Scooter was really scuffling coming in here, but uh, he looks fixed. Hard down to first foul. Kurt Gibson put it simply when he said that Trevor Cahill simply has to get quicker outs, which Gibby said is certainly easier said than done. But it's got to be a game plan thing. Trevor just simply throwing too many pitches out there. And for a pitch to contact guy like Cahill, who wants to keep it in play and throw those ground balls, batters don't hit it hard off him. His stuff is so good. Trust that and use it. And then sooner or later, Bob, the pitch counts down. You're going seventh, eighth, even ninth inning sometime, and that's when he's back. That's when he's there. Well, we've talked about how much the bullpen has been used in the early going this season. Not really unusual for any team to use their bullpen a lot in the early part of the season, but Trevor Cahill is a guy, when he's right, can give that bullpen a night off. Get those quick outs, get those ground balls, get the double plays. Keep that pitch count down. Get deeper into the ball game and give that bullpen a little bit of a break. One and two now. Two and two. The problem when he can't command the two-seam fastball for Trevor is that everything he throws works off of that. So when the two-seam fastball is gone and that's his number one go-to pitch, where do you go from there? And he just gets caught in this cycle of trying to find something that works. Base hit to right. Scudero stops at second. Two on, nobody out for the Giants here in the fourth. Catcher, Buster Posey. I'll tell you what, uh, he may be a bathroom scale's worst enemy, but this guy can hit. I mean, he hits balls off his shoelaces. He tomahawks pitches up above the top of the strike zone. He can cover the outside corner and farther away. He's quick on pitches inside. He's now got 10 hits in his last 16 at bats. Buster Posey has a 10 game hit streak going. He struck out his first time up. You hope the numbers uh, hold true here. Trevor Cahill leads National League pitchers in batting average with runners in scoring position. Opposing hitters only two for 28. It's an 071 average. That might drop in. A.J. Pollock catches up to it. Scudero hustles back to the bag. He went halfway in case it did drop trying to score, but Pollock tracked it down. When A.J. caught that one, Scudero was nearly three quarters of the way to third base. Hunter Pence grounded out his first time up and if he can get a ground ball right here and in this inning that'll get him out of it. There it is. Play at second. They won't turn two, but Cliff Pennington turns in another spectacular defensive play in that Diamondbacks infield. He's done that all year long. 
Saved a run. Such a quick first step on the ball, accelerates into that dive, and a strong underhanded throw from his knees to second base to get the force out. Yeah, you're right. That saved a run for the time being. That ball looked like it was ticketed for left field, and the Giants were looking at the first run of the game. Bob, we talked about it at the start of the telecast. The defense, it's helping them win games, and it might get them out of a mess here. First and third, two outs. Here's Blanco. He grounded to first, his first time up. There's a strike, one and one. Forty pitches now for Trevor Cahill, 29 for strikes. Get quicker outs. That's the game plan. There's the pitch counts by inning. Two and two now. Gregor Blanco last year, 244. Five homers, 34 RBI in 141 games. He, of course, was the man who made the spectacular running catch that saved Matt Cain's perfect game. There goes Pence at first. Struck him out. Ring him up, sit him down. Trevor Cahill wiggles off the hook. The Giants get the first two on in the inning. They get nothing across. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. The heart of the order. Prado, Goldie Ross when we come back. Make plans now to be at Chase Field on Monday, May 27th for the Memorial Day doubleheader as the D-backs take on the Texas Rangers in an interleague matchup. Games are at 12.40 and 6.40, so spend the entire day at the ballpark and enjoy the outdoor street festival in between games. Plus, when you buy tickets for both games, we'll give you free D-bucks that you can use for food and concessions. Call us at 602-462-4600 or log on to dbackscom slash doubleheader. Baxter's like Santa here. They're lined up. The world's most fan-friendly mascot, D. Baxter. Martin Prado struck out his first time up. Prado back of the two-hole tonight. On the homestand so far, Martin three for 19.
right field. Honor Pence giving chase, but it's uh, low. We know one thing based on track record Martin Prado will hit. He's hit over 300 for the last five seasons on base percentage of at least 350 for the last five seasons. Track record. Willie Bloomquist compared him to the former Mariners DH Edgar Martinez in terms of his approach, his ability to stay inside the baseball, maintain a good idea of what he's doing up there. Base hit. And guess what? He didn't even have to go to right field. Second hit of the game for the Diamondbacks off Madison Bumgarner. Nice controlled swing as always from Martin Prado. Occasionally he'll get his weight out on that front foot, but he always keeps his hands back. Clean line drive single into center field. I, Bob, I think it did him a world of good, and, I, and frankly, I hope Gibby does it a little more often. Let him hit their lead off a little bit every once in a while and start fresh. Here's Paul Goldschmidt. Fly it out his first time up. Goldie against the Giants, 357. Three homers and 14 RBIs in his last 16 games. And Tim Lidsigam <laughs> starts here tomorrow. <laughs> Get your tickets now. The Goldie Show. Tim uh, has a history of having just a little bit of trouble getting Paul Goldschmidt out. And hopefully... Goldie will be able to capitalize on that trend here tomorrow. There's big time Timmy Jim. Sometimes there's just no logical way to explain why some hitters dominate pitchers and why pitchers dominate good hitters. Just see the ball really well. Take advantage of every mistake that comes your way. Now that oh, is, oh, man. A, as the guys in the Giants booth next to us say, ownage is ownage. Yeah. And that's ownage. He's got the pink slip on Tim Lincecum. Speaking of Tim Lincecum, our Chevron upcoming matchup. This is tomorrow here at Chase, the series and homestand finale. After that, it's this, it's off to San Diego. But last game of the homestand tomorrow, Tim Lincecum and Brandon McCarthy. Hope to see you out here at Chase Field tomorrow. See what Paul Goldschmidt can do with Lincecum this time. Home run against Tim on opening day here last year. Cody Ross. Cody tapped back to the mound his first time up. Four for 17 on the homestand so far. about due to take one out of here. I agree. Tough one to keep fair right there. That slider from a left-handed pitcher working its way inside. Cody got the barrel on it. Unfortunately, it's just very tough to keep that ball fair. Cody five for 15 versus left-hand pitchers so far this year.
Right field, Pence comes in. What about Mickey's walk up music? Name that too. You got me. Yeah, me too. Well, it's not, if it's not Tom Petty, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Montero flied out to left his first time up. Sixty five of Miggy's eighty six at bats this season had come in the cleanup spot. He's in the five hole today. Five for twenty one this year batting from the fifth spot including a home run. Here's the 1-0. 2-0. Oh. oh, that's a strike. Bill Miller. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He seems okay with it. Yeah. All right. The top of the zone. All right. an interesting cat. I'll tell you a lot of funny stories in the media guide about him. He married his high school sweetheart back on Valentine's Day of 2010 and gave her a five day old calf as a wedding present. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like a dowry? I guess. Or a, or a barter deal? Oh, <laughs> as a now what do you do? You keep it as a pet? You can't eat it, can you? No, it's an emotional attachment there. Well, while they're uh, meeting at the mound here, quick story. Mike Kruko in the booth next door told us about Madison Bumgarner on a trip to Colorado. Uh, they get off the plane, get on the two buses. There's Kruko on the left, Kuiper on the right. Get on the two buses to head to downtown Denver. It's about a half hour, 45 minute drive, and the first bus broke down. So they both pull over to the side of the road. Flip open the hatch on the back of bus number one that was broken down. Madison Bumgarner grabs a screwdriver and a wrench and gets underneath there and fixes the team bus. <laughs> He's a handy guy. They love his demeanor. Very oh. quiet, humble, no nonsense, very simple guy. But boy, he can pitch. Yeah, Kruko is telling the story. He just picture the bus on the side of the road, and Bumgarner's got his head in the hood, and he leans over and goes, "Try it now. Give it a shot." Sure enough, <laughs> cranks it up, and they're off and running again. I told you guys the story before the ball game today when I first met him a couple years ago at uh, Wrigley Field. They were just coming off an off day in Chicago, and I. Said, did you enjoy your off day? What'd you do? Down the street to one of them shopping centers. <laughs> Drops in. Prado heads for third. Miguel Montero, first and third, two outs for the D backs as they go shopping for a run here. Good to see Miggy finally getting some results here. Nice approach, gets up on top of that ball, drives it just to the left, a straightaway center. 
Boy, Pagan conceded that bag from second to third rather easily for Martin Prado. I think he would have had a shot at him had he come up firing. Martin was digging all the way, so here's Marte now. Now we did. We were in San Francisco last week, Bob. We saw a couple of plays with Didi Gregorius where there was some discussion or confusion between Pagan and the left fielder. And the Diamondbacks were able to take advantage there. And really, I thought one of those plays won them at least one game and possibly two with Didi's aggressive base running. Mm -hmm. And we saw the same thing there from Pagan. A little casual out there, maybe. And Prado hustling into third. So first and third with the two outs here. Marte struck out his first time up. Josh Wilson in the background there on deck. Look out. Boy, it's getting dangerous over there. Looks like that might have caught Cliff Pennington. Boy, that is a bullet pulled back into that dugout. Yep. It's kind of a glancing shot off the wrist and then down off of his right thigh. Looks like he's okay. I like how Gibby never even flinched. <laughs> he was probably hoping it hit him. <laughs> Alfredo Marte hits it foul, but that has hit a mile foul. What third deck? Oh, oh. Off the walkway? Yeah, there it is. He turned that into Fettuccini, Alfredo. Nice hustle there. Wow. That was a foul ball and a half. Straighten it out. Right field, Pence. Diamondbacks get two hits, but they strand two. We're through four here. No score, Chase. to see Trevor Cahill do throwing strikes trusting the movement on that sinking fastball trusting his defense behind him and he is our APS energy all-star and Kirk Gibson said he wanted Trevor to get quicker outs look at the movement on that ball that's all natural movement and these are the numbers that all add up to quicker outs with that last bullet point three or fewer pitches to 10 of the 15 hitters he's faced you gotta love that and two of the four flyouts were infield pop-ups so this is a formula with which Trevor Cahill will win a lot of games. No score through four. Each team with three hits. Crawford, Belton, Bumgarner here. 7-8-9 in the Giants' fifth. 
Crawford grounded a second his first time up. Brandon Crawford 0 for 3 with a walk last night. He leads the Giants with five home runs and 11 extra base hits. But he's been slumping lately. 1 for 15 coming in here. He is 0 71 on this Giants road trip. Forty four pitches for Cahill now, thirty one for strikes. But he's fallen behind here, three and oh, with belt on deck. There's a strike, three and one. Listening to Greg Schulte and Tom Candiotti, glove ready. <laughs> Left center, Marte backing up, backing up at the track. And he's at the wall, makes the catch. Loud out in the fifth there. Sunday, it's the premiere of Cup of Coffee with Steve Bredume. Ken Kendricks talks to Steve about being a baseball owner and what his plans are for that famous Hannes Wagner baseball card. It's Cup of Coffee this Sunday at 4 on Fox Sports Arizona. Looking forward to that. Got the chance to sit down with Mr. Kendrick and talk about a lot of things. Growing up in West Virginia, running a baseball team, being a businessman here in not only the Valley but in all of Arizona. So thanks to him for his time, and it was a really fun discussion. Got that one coming up. Another one with Miguel Montero on the way later that month. Brandon Belt, 0 for 1. That in itself is a story, the way he has tortured the D-back so far this year. Well, that bat by Brandon Crawford, the first time that Trevor Cahill has gone to a three-ball count so far in this game. And he's behind 2-0 and here, so that's a trend you want to quickly reverse if you can. There's the strike, 2-1. and one. I saw a preview for the new Hangover movie. There's a Hangover 3. Have you seen the first two? I uh, saw the first one. There's a, there's a scene with a giraffe. It's troubling. <laughs> I just, that's uh, Brandon Belt, of course. That's his nickname, Baby Giraffe. He's, kind of see it. Has some giraffe-like qualities about him. Is that the same girl from last night? You're, when you said stifle it, Susie, or whatever you said? No, different. No. Thing. Okay. They're in, they're in counseling right now, the couple from, <laughs> from last night. Three and two now. AJ and Susie. See, this is, you've got new and old. Sedona red, the purple. My hair. That's a Giants uh, tank top and a D-back shirt. Left-hand side, Marte on the run. <laughs> Alfredo was shaded way over towards center, so a bit too much ground to cover there. quickly once you cross that foul line down in the right or left field corner just a couple of steps and you're up against the sidewall Josh Wilson and they finally figure out a way to get Brandon Belt out and that at bat he's 0 for 2 tonight Giants making Trevor Cahill work a little harder in this inning. Mentioned the three ball count to Brandon Crawford. That was a nine pitch at bat by Brandon Belt. Uh, it's oh it's uh, Avatar. Got on the wrong freeway. 
Bumgarner first pitch swinging pops it up Wilson wants it underneath. And there's a one two three fifth for Trevor Cahill we go bottom five no score. to what's next by Mazda we believe if it's not worth driving it's not worth building and by Jack in the Box the Chipotle Chicken Club combo is back for a limited time at Jack in the Box try one today with fries and a drink for just $4.99 plus tax Josh Wilson leads off the Diamondbacks fifth against Madison Bumgarner no score so far each team with three hits and a very good pitcher's duel here, which is good news for Trevor Cahill, who's now retired the last six he's faced. Wilson grounded out his first time up. Wilson, Pennington, Cahill here, 7-8-9 in the Arizona fifth. Hard down the right field line. Foul with 0-2. Madison Bumgarner, born in Hickory, North Carolina. Went to South Caldwell High School in Hudson, North Carolina. Drafted in the first round by the Giants in 2007. The 10th player selected overall that year. Diamondbacks, this is curious, drafted Jared Parker one spot ahead of Bumgarner that year. And, of course, Parker was traded to Oakland for Trevor Cahill. How about that? I see that you've stopped eating the... Uh, Mike and Sharon cactus corn long enough to <laughs> participate because <laughs> I emptied both cups I had. It's yeah, addictive. I, just, I ran out. I didn't quit. We had to send Dennis down for more. <laughs> He's going to bring Joan. If you're listening, some oh. some uh, cactus corn is on the way. Absolutely. Getting one to go here. High in the air to right. Hunter Pence. Well, he's zigzagging all over the place on that one. Smooth as burlap. <laughs> Cliff Pennington starting to come around here. Cliff had a single his first time up. And he's had some spark to his bat last few games here. He's had a good homestand. Maybe it's the high socks. Crawford. Talking about Madison Bumgarner's pitch selection, the numbers at brooksbaseball.net, which does a tremendous job with pitch FX, show that Bumgarner threw 1,412 sliders last season. That's the most among all starting pitchers in baseball. He threw more sliders than any other starter in the game last year. 
And one study at Fangraphs showed that most pitchers throw the slider about 15% of the time, but last year Bumgarner threw his slider 40% of the time. That's some wear and tear. All those sliders can lead to perhaps some injury concerns from stress on the elbow and the shoulder. He doesn't torque his arm as hard on his slider as some other pitchers might. We, we documented early on in the ballgame that slinging action he has with the left arm as he turns to deliver the ball to the plate. Just a slight tweak of the grip it gets that slider to do what he wants it to do. Some pitchers really have to maneuver the baseball and turn their wrist and snap their elbow at the point of release to get the kind of break they're looking for. Bumgarner doesn't have quite the same stress throwing his slider. One and two to Cahill. Spiro is there. Bumgarner has now retired six of the last seven he's faced. We're through five. No score here at Chase Field. Ends it, A's and Angels in the 19th inning. Yeah, a little bonus baseball by the Bay last night. Brandon Moss with that home run ended it. I think the players from both teams and the few fans that stuck around to the end were wondering if it was going to ever end. He got pied by a teammate, pied himself. A little Gatorade bath. That had to feel good. Six hours and 32 minutes. Three center fielders went down to injury in the ball game. I love those two notes at the bottom. You can fly to the space station quicker. <laughs> now that's taking care of business. The amazing oh, rewards credit card from NBAZ. Learn more at NBArizona.com. Yeah, six hours and 32 minutes. How about this for another note from that game? Josh Hamilton uh, for the Angels swung and missed eight times during that 19-inning game. Marco Scudero this season has swung and missed six times. <laughs> Of course, Brandon McCarthy was playing in Oakland last year. Pagan leads it off. Pennington behind the back. Cliff Pennington again. And a nice defensive play at short. One out here in the sixth. Place is uh, full of Oakland athletics here. Cliff, a former A's great. Second baseman. Anyone who ever played anywhere else is a former great. That's yeah. the way it's going to go. All right, uh, we have an issue here with yeah. Marco Scudero. Oh, Goldie had an equipment issue. Yeah. That's been taken care of. And now Marco Scudero can come in. That's why you've always got to have a backup glove ready just in case. I think that throw from Cliff Pennington uh, maybe popped a string in the webbing of that first baseman's mitt. I don't need anybody messing with Goldie's glove. No. It's too good. Here's Scudero. Single his last time up. He's one for two. Marco Scudero, 37 years old, 12th season in the big leagues. Right back at you, Trevor. Trevor Cahill's now retired, the last eight he's faced.
It seems to be a common trait among sinker ball pitchers. The ability to field your position when you're throwing so many sinkers and getting those ground balls. Some of them are inevitably going to come right back to you on the mound. Trevor Cahill in good defensive position able to make that play easily. 60 pitches 43 for strikes and they're fixing Goldie's glove. Thank goodness. The Panda. Sandoval has fouled out and singled. He's one for two. Father and son at the game here at Chase. With glove in hand, ready to go. Goldie might need that later. <laughs> the Panda career at Chase Field. 353 in 36 games. And they were worried about the elbow had to come out of the game yesterday and uh, the panda said after the game last night the elbow pain was similar but not as severe as the right elbow neuritis he went through in spring training that almost put him on the DL. Stays alive two and two now. Sandoval had an MRI in the spring and they found an inflamed ulnar nerve and a bone spur in there and it's uh, it had been fine for most of the season, but a little flare up last night. And they weren't sure about him today, and here he is. Occasionally it'll bother him on a throw if he has to rush it, can't get his arm into a good angle, but uh, more often than not, it's on awkward swings because Pablo Sandoval likes to swing that path. Does he have any other kind of swing? <laughs> Adam Eaton getting closer. Puts a swing on that one to straightaway center, A.J. Pollock. Trevor Cahill has now retired the last nine he's faced. That's a nine-pitch inning. CenturyLink, your link to what's up next. A.J. Pollock, Martin Prado, and Paul Goldschmidt top of the order in a scoreless game. Bullying, the leading national anti-bullying organization for kids and teens in the U.S. Stop Out Bullying focuses on preventing bullying in all forms of digital abuse. It educates against racism and hatred, deters violence in schools and online, and helps at-risk students. You can learn how to help out. Please visit stopoutbullying.org. A.J. Pollock 0 for 2. Pollock, Prado, Goldschmidt 1, 2, and 3 here in the 6th. Trevor Cahill has been terrific. Madison Bumgarner has been very good. Each team with three hits. 0-0 zero, zero in the sixth. And I'll tell you what, Bob, if this is what we're going to see from Trevor Cahill the rest of the year, I'll take it right oh, now. Yeah. Where, where do I sign? <laughs> no doubt about it. He has looked terrific. This is the kind of game both pitchers are really dealing out there on the mound. Both defenses making plays behind them. Uh, you get the feeling this is the kind of game that's going to hinge on some kind of a mistake. Either a mistake pitch to the wrong hitter, a defensive error. It's been a crazy.
crisp, well pitched game up to this point. Trevor Cahill has twice tonight retired nine in a row. Two and two to AJ now. AJ four for 26 as he steps in here. He has good splits this season 267 versus righties, 265 against lefties. Shot for third, the Panda. Boy, tell you what. That's a nice athletic play. He pounced on that one and made a quick throw. Yeah, just the way he fielded that ball. He kind of caught it behind the right side of his body. So he was already in a throwing position. Look how he turned his body, got his shoulder pointed toward first base. So as soon as that ball got in his glove, he was ready to throw. Martin Prado, one for two, singles last time up. Four for 20 on the homestand. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Prado crushed lefties last season. 323 against left hand pitching. Led the major leagues, 22 doubles against lefties. Straight up in the air, Pagan. Two down here in the sixth. Bumgarner has now retired eight of the last nine he's faced. And with two outs, here's Paul Goldschmidt is 0 for 2. A view from outside here at Chase. Come on in. Join us. No score. Good one going here. Nice wide concourses here. You never miss the action when you're walking from section to section here at Chase Field. You go to some of those old ballparks. I mean, you, you want a Diet Pepsi or something, forget it. It's like you're going into an underground bunker. Here you can see everything. Goldschmidt, hard but foul down the left field line. Paul Goldschmidt, born in Wilmington, Delaware. Went to high school at the Woodlands in Texas. Drafted by the D-backs in the eighth round in 2009. The 246th player selected overall out of Texas State. There were 245 players they like better than Goldie. All of baseball. We talk about it all the time. It's an inexact science. Sure is. Sometimes guys slip through the cracks. Other times guys are overvalued and drafted way too high, given way too much money, and are gone all too quickly. <laughs> Said the former manager. <laughs> Sounds like he had one or two guys in mind there. Yeah. Who shall remain nameless. That's what it's all about. Three and one to Goldie. Boy, Goldie rarely gets a pitch, especially a fastball, from the middle of the plate in anymore. If teams are going to throw him a heater, it's going to be on the outside corner or farther away. Posey's just been living out there on Paul Goldschmidt so far in this series. Going away again. Paul Goldschmidt gives it a ride to left. Blanco was there. And a 1 2 3 6 for Madison Bumgarner. The pitching duel will go into the seventh. No score.
Bumgarner are locked up in a pitcher's duel. Fun times at the Ram Trucks Pool. Great place to watch a game here at Chase Field. The RamTrucks.com pool area where things seem kind of mellow out there tonight. Just a nice chill crowd enjoying the game. Everybody comfortable out there. Trevor Cahill looking very comfortable on the mound. He has retired the last nine he's faced. He'll work to Posey, Pence, and Blanco here. Four, five, and six in the San Francisco seventh. Buster Posey steps in with a 10-game hit streak, but he's 0 for 2 so far here. Struck out in the first, flying out in the fourth. Sixty-seven pitches for Trevor Cahill, 47 for strikes. He has been quick, he has been efficient, and he has been on. And right as I say that, he falls behind 2-0. Got to believe Posey has the green light to swing 3-0 and if it's a pitch to his liking. Four-pitch walk to start the inning from Trevor Cahill. That ends his streak of nine straight retired. Lead-off man on for the Giants. Obviously a red flag when a guy has been pounding away at the strike zone as effectively as Trevor Cahill has been tonight. Four-pitch lead-off walk here in the seventh. Guys probably start moving around a little bit down in that Diamondbacks bullpen. Just start stretching their legs. Well, he threw 105 pitches in his last start. And he's just crossed the 70 mark now, so he should be fine for a while. change up that time from Trevor Cahill. It's a nice compliment to that heavy sinking fastball. Same kind of movement but about 8 to 10 miles per hour slower than his fastball. Chase that one in the dirt but got a piece of it. See how this thing's moving. That was my lightsaber sound effect for I Trevor. Thought it was, yeah. He's a, he's a big star, uh, Star Wars guy, Trevor. There's a strike. Bring him up. Sit him down. One away here in the seventh. Fourth strikeout of the night for Trevor Cahill. Really nice comeback after that four pitch walk. Look at this sinker. Starts off the outside corner, works right back into the zone for a called strike three. Gregor Blanco is 0 for 2. Hunter Pence is striking out a lot this year. That was his 27th on the season already. There's Blanco who has said he's working on shortening his swing, wants to hit more ground balls and low line drives. Trying to shorten it up here against Cahill. It's 27 strikeouts by Hunter Pence. Barely get him into the top 10 in the National League. Jay Bruce pacing the way with 38 punch outs already. Well, Goldie's not too far behind. He had 31 and 97 at bats coming into tonight. He's 0 for 3 with three flyouts. I don't think it goes back to what you were saying, Bob, about Goldie and working him low and away like that. Second base, can they roll it? Wilson, Pennington, Goldie, Trevor Cahill. Seven shutout innings. Get up and stretch. Home half of the seventh on the way. Four, six, three, no score.
Giants and Trevor Cahill for the Diamondbacks. And do not adjust your sets. Don't to hit the uh, the tint button <laughs> on the old, what is it, tint or hue or whatever that is. Yeah. Joe Borowski's here with us. It's red shirt day at the ballpark. Uh, what are you seeing from both these guys here, Joe? Well, Madison Baumgartner, once again, he, he just throws all of his pitches for strikes. He's keeping the Diamondback hitters off balance. But Trevor Cahill, what a fantastic job tonight of just – being aggressive in the zone, he's letting his sinker work for him. Instead of trying to be perfect with it on the corners, he's starting it out on the inner half or the outer half and just letting it work for him. He's faced 24 hitters tonight. 14 of them have been three pitches or less. That's how you get deep in games. You don't, you're don't. you not working those three, two counts on everyone. Let your, let your defense work behind you. You have the best fielding percentage team in baseball. Let them field for you. It's, it's remarkable. And Kirk Gibson said, Joe, we were talking about this earlier, and you know that he's got to get quicker outs. He's yes. got to be more efficient. 105 pitches last time just to get through five innings. And he's been the complete opposite of that here tonight, as you said. Yeah, and the one thing I know, and, and, and Bob, you, you can back me up on this, is when you're constantly three pitch. 3-2 on everyone, your fielders are going to get back on their heels. If you want them in the game, making plays for you, get quick 2-3-4 pitch outs, and, and those guys will be diving all over the place for you. Yeah, not to mention, when you fall behind in the count, it changes the kind of swings that opposing sure. hitters take against you. They're much more aggressive. They can zone you in a little bit more, but when you're ahead in the count, they take more defensive swings, and when you've got that kind of movement that Trevor has, you're going to get a lot of quick, easy outs. Cody Ross has got a 3-1 count here. 3-2. And you know umpires love that type, type of game, oh, too. Yeah. If you're around the zone, you're going to get those close pitches if you're constantly pounding the strike zone. Joe, I've heard so many guys say that the problem with Trevor Cahill, and the coaches have said that, Miguel Montero has said it, Will Nieves has said it, is this stuff has so much natural yeah. movement, yet when he gets out there, he tries to kind of put a little extra on it, overmaneuver on it, and it backfires on him. Have you seen that? Absolutely. And, you, and you've heard me have a say, when he's warming up before the game, his stuff is absolutely filthy in the pen. But when he gets in the game, he's trying to be too fine with his pitches instead of just letting a natural movement take over. Lead off walk here for the D-backs. That's a good sign. Bumgarner had retired nine of the previous ten he faced, but uh, Cody is on to lead it off in the seventh. And here's Miguel Montero, who singled... His last time up, Gerardo Parra getting limber. It's killing him that he's not in the game. I mean, that guy is just a handful of want right there. How's Miggy looking to you, Joe? We, we keep saying that he looks like he's digging his way out. And, and the sure sign of that is when he could drive the ball to left center with authority, and you saw that in his one hit tonight. He drove that ball in the gap, and that's when he's just staying on the ball a little bit longer. He's letting it travel deep. He's not trying to pull everything, not being too anxious at the plate. It was funny. We had we ran that sound bite where he's just said he, he was starting to stand there and watch all these balls hit to gaps, get caught, and just go, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> the baseball guards are not kind to you when you are struggling. A good patient at bat here, getting himself in a good hitter's count. This is interesting. A leadoff walk, and now he's behind 2-0 on one Montero. And with as good as Bumgarner's been tonight, these are the type of innings where you're going to have to capitalize. He's been so good all night. Now he's having a little bit of trouble with the strike zone. You have to make him pay here. Yeah, Joe, we were talking about it earlier. When you get two pitchers on top of their game like these two yeah. guys tonight, this is the kind of game that usually hinges on a mistake, either a hanging breaking ball or a change up that you leave up around the belt or a defensive mistake. Or you also implement the running game, maybe a little hit and run. Do something to open up a hole out there, something that you're normally not doing when the guy's cruising. But base runners have, have not been uh, plentiful tonight, so sometimes you just got to move things along. Last night's winner, Gene Machi up in the Giants bullpen. He's been terrific all year. Montero fouls it straight up and behind the plate. That's out of play. That's why we saw Gerardo Parr with his bat starting to get loose over in the dugout. He realizes that if Bumgarner does struggle here with all the right-handed hitters in the lineup it's probably going to be a righty coming in out of that Giants bullpen tonight so are starting to get prepared for a possible at bat it's funny when those guys are not in the lineup and Hinsky does the same thing they kind of manage along with Gibby and they sort of do the math okay lefty struggling righty up and it may be me here that gets the call 2-2 now 
Madison Bumgarner has not had a whole lot of success for as good a pitcher as he is against these Diamondbacks. Last four starts, 0-3 and and ERA just under five. So they've actually done fairly well against him. Won the game that he started last Wednesday afternoon in San Francisco in extra innings after he was so good throughout most of the game. Belt. That's in foul ground. We'll do it again. Six starts here at Chase Field in his career. He's given up eight home runs. That's kind of hard to believe. Of course, we're seeing him at his best here tonight. He hasn't made many mistakes that you can really put a good swing on. Yeah, last week he was outstanding. At one point, retired 14 straight Diamondbacks and 18 of 19 until he ran into trouble very late in the game. 96 pitches right now, 58 for strikes. Ross on first after a leadoff walk. Three and two to Miguel Montero. Alfredo Marte is on deck. Joe, what do you got coming up in the postgame show? Well, big thing is we're going to really break down Trevor Cahill's outing tonight. Kind of show you exactly what I was talking about with, with him in a sinker. And, and, and you could just show where he's starting it on the plate and how it's how it's letting his he's letting the movement work for him instead of where we saw in the past where if he if he jumped ahead of somebody he's trying to nibble on the corner before you know it it's three two 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 he was just aggressive tonight three and two here to Montero belt at first can they turn it there you go. There you go. and they get Montero going up the line two down now. Yeah, we've only seen Joe Trevor Cahill like this once this year that I can recall, and that was his start against the Dodgers here before we went out on that long nine-game road trip. So Alfredo Marte will get a chance now. Cahill getting ready for the eighth. Only 76 pitches so far. Now, that's as efficient as you can get. One walk, three hits, and four strikeouts. And one of the numbers that stand out right there, why he has such a pit, low pitch total, is he only has the four strikeouts tonight. We've seen in the past where he's really racked up those strikeouts, but to the detriment of his of his pitch count. Alfredo Marte, 0 for 2, 8 for 41 on the year. What do you make of his motion, Joe? He's got that. Bob and I have been talking about it as he goes over 100 pitches now. It, it's a kind of a big, got that big lanky. Yeah, it got that big sweeping yeah. arm action that it, it, it almost comes like it's coming from first base at you. Throws across his body yeah. a little bit on top of that. And he throws that big slurve. And a lot of times, most hitters give up on that because they think it's going to be way outside and it just has that late late break into the strike zone. Well, what was happening with him last year was he was kind of swiveling around so much he was almost at times facing second base and he had a Hideo Nomo kind of thing going for a while. But he's got that under control. Built behind the mound. He has it. And that's the inning. Joe, thanks very much. Look forward to the postgame show. Appreciate it. No score. We head to the eighth here at Chase.
by Ram Trucks. And, Bob, it's been Trevor Cahill who has been very efficient, and you don't really need to see him racking up big strikeout totals. He's better when he does that, throw ground ball. You'd prefer him not to strike out a lot of guys, just like Joe said a moment ago when he's striking out, guys. The pitch count gets up there, and eventually you're going to have to get into that bullpen. He when, has, he's, when he's pitching to that early contact, keeps the pitch count down. He can get deeper into the game. And he's been tremendously efficient. That was a theme here. Kirk Gibson said he needed Cahill to get quicker outs. And there is the out distribution right now. Trevor starts the eighth at only 76 pitches. It's amazing. His last start out, he needed 105 pitches just to get through the fifth. He starts the eighth now at 76. Paul Goldschmidt at first. The Goldie Glove, one away. Boy, Diamondbacks defenders just jumping through flaming hoops here tonight, making all the plays. As an infielder, you know when you're playing behind Trevor Cahill, you're going to have a busy night. You're going to get a lot of ground balls. You're going to have to make some plays, and they have been sparkling here tonight. Well, here's Brandon Belts, who's been such a problem all season for the Diamondbacks, but he's 0 for 2 so far. Dave Rigetti and Buster Posey having a conversation. And Bumgarner get to take the jacket off here. Sanchez is in the on-deck circle. Pitcher spot due up third here in the eighth. There's a chance Bumgarner could take the at-bat should Brandon Belt reach. You may decide to send him up there to put down a sack bunt, even though that would make the second out of the inning. Let's see how Bruce Bochy wants to play this. Maybe two outs, nobody on. You let him take the at-bat. You know he wants to take that at-bat and stay in this game. Strikes out Brandon Belt. Fifth strikeout for Trevor Cahill and the two seam fastball that breaks in towards right handers and tails away from left handers has been working really well tonight. So Sanchez will hit that ends Bumgarner's night. I'll tell you what no disrespect to the Giants bullpen because they've been very very good this year but anybody but Bumgarner. Good riddance. He was outstanding again. And the thing about Madison Bumgarner is he's only 23 years old. How about that? Pennington from center field. Oh. Ah. Cliff Pennington. What a night Cliff has had at shortstop, or in that case, from shallow center. We'll go bottom eight. No score here at Chase.
Final results. What jersey would you least like to see the year your spouse wearing? And almost half said Dodgers. Good call. I'm Bob Brindley, and I hate the Dodgers. Oh, hate's a strong word. That was all part of the promos for that particular season, trying to generate some enthusiasm for a subpar Giants team. <laughs> but we love to beat those Dodgers. And she's pleading her case there. All right, moving a little farther away. Blue Man Group. Surprisingly, that guy's sitting by himself. <laughs> No, he's really sitting with his friends. Exactly. Yeah. Wilson, Pennington, and the pitcher spot here. Here's a question, Bob. Yeah. Cahill do up third in the inning here. Casilla on to pitch for the Giants after they pinch hit for Bumgarner the last inning. This Cahill for you hit in this inning. I think it all depends on what happens to the first two hitters in this inning. Obviously, his pitch count is in great shape. Uh, and despite that leadoff walk in the seventh, he settled right back in. I think uh, if you get a chance to leave him in the game, Kirk Gibson would like to. He's retired, Trevor Cahill. 14 of the last 15 he's faced. One and one to Wilson now against Santiago Casilla. One and two. Josh 0 for 2, grounded out in the third, flying out in the fifth. Only two runners have reached third base the entire game. Scudero for the Giants, Prado for the D-backs, both in the fourth. Other than that, it's been all Cahill and Mumgarner here. This gets back to what we were talking about briefly last night, the difference between the American League and the National League. Here we are with the pitcher spot due up third this inning. Trevor Cahill is pitching a gem. His pitch count is very, very reasonable at this point. But Kirk Gibson's going to have to make a tough decision here, depending on what happens with these first two hitters here in the eighth. In the American League, this is no doubt or Trevor Cahill's going to go back out there. Well, in the American League, he, oh, you mean on the mound? Yeah. 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 See? Yeah. But the situation dictates oftentimes. I mean, it, what's to think about? He's cruising along. There's a DH. Diamondbacks have uh, yet to have a complete game by a starting pitcher so far this season. The offense has been scuffling a bit here. They have now not scored in 12 consecutive innings. Gesundheit. One and two to Josh Wilson here in a scoreless eighth. Oh! High in the air to left. Josh Wilson, get out of here. His first of the year. And there's your run, Trevor Cahill. Diamondbacks lead it one nothing. That's a Fulton home run. Another $150 goes to Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. And this one is on Josh Wilson. How about that? He just missed one the other day. Yeah, he did. Anybody but Bumgarner. Santiago Casilla had not surrendered a home run yet this season. He'd held the opposition to a very low 175 batting average, but Josh Wilson flexing his muscles puts the D-backs on the board. Here's Cliff Pennington. Does that change what you do with Cahill, who right now is out on deck? Yeah, he's out on deck. He's going right. to take the at bat and he's going to take the ball in the top half of the ninth. Charles Nagy calling down to the bullpen, telling everybody to put it in neutral. That was a no doubter by Josh. Oh, there that was a blast. So I got Josh right now at four for ten over his last three games, including today. That, that's a smile of a 400 hitter right there. Look at Gibby. Gibby's got a big grin on his face. Pennington to center. Pagan in the gap. Let's go downstairs to Brad. 
Well, Bob, you were talking about the decision that Kirk Gibson was going to have to make. Uh, as soon as that ball left the yard, he looked over at Gerardo Parra, who obviously was probably going to hit for Cahill if the situation dictated. But he said, no, we're going with Cahill. There was a good exchange right there. And uh, again, all about the decision making. But G was ready to go. But Wilson came through. G's been ready to go since batting practice. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Cahill had a sacrifice bunt in the third, lined out back in the fifth. A discussion with uh, Paul Goldschmidt and Josh Wilson about the pitches. There's the home run swing. Well, I love to see that too. When a hitter goes back to the bench and talking to his teammates that are possibly going to take an at bat against. The pitcher out there on the mound describing what the pitch did, what you saw, what his arm angle was. That's the best scouting report you can get. There's the strikeout. Two down here in the eighth. Hey, fans, next time you're visiting Chase Field, be sure to stop by the new Pepsi Grab and Go concession stand outside section 104. You can get a chance to win great prizes. Find all your favorite Pepsi products. Grab and go outside section 104. See, they're grabbing, going. You're in there, you're out. That's the thing. Got your favorite Pepsi products there available. AJ Pollock is 0 for 3. And Bob, this one is following the same script as the game that the Diamondbacks played last Wednesday at AT&T Park, where Bumgarner shut them down essentially for most of the game. He got out of the game. They won it late. Well, it doesn't always work out this way, but it's such a, an emotional lift when you get a pitcher that's dealing out of the ball game. As I said before, it doesn't matter who it is trotting in out of that Giants bullpen. You'd rather see anybody than Madison Bumgarner the way he was pitching tonight. 0-2 oh to A.J. Pollock. AJ four for his last 27. <laughs> Mentioned an article that Bernie Pleskoff wrote not too long ago that you can still find at dbacks.com talking about AJ Pollock's swing. And Bernie writes that the scouts say a very quiet, simple approach, not a whole lot of extra movement. Good line drive swing. But with two strikes, as Bob has mentioned, watch that front foot much shorter, quicker. Yeah, just kind of gets his heel up off the ground, keeps his toe down. Hey, there's Bernie. You can check out Bernie's great work at MLB.com, Diamondbacks.com. Josh Wilson in the pool. Giants fans a little nervous. They have the top of the order coming up in the ninth. Pagan, Scudero, Sandoval. <laughs> Look out, Brindley. Oh, we're good. Right at Greg Schulte. Is the governor in one piece? He didn't even make a play on that ball. I mean, that was right off the facing there. Full count again, three and two. Yeah. <laughs> Leo Gilmartin standing watch back there over. 
<laughs> Greg and Candy. Leo runs the show up here. Governor's a veteran. I mean, he didn't even flinch. No. Yeah. Ball four. Oh, good at bat. Hey, we invite you to bring the whole family to Chase Field on Sunday, May 12th, to celebrate Mother's Day when the D-backs take on the Phillies at 110. Don't have a gift for mom yet? Well, don't worry. We'll take care of it. The first 5,000 moms will get a custom D-backs tote bag courtesy of Diet Pepsi. Get tickets now online at dbacks.com. Josh Wilson, instant offense. Oh, it doesn't get any cooler than that. There had been very little noise out of either offense tonight, but Josh Wilson picks a great time to hit his first home run of the season. New pitcher for the Giants with one on and two out here in the eighth is Sandy Rosario, 27-year-old right-hander called up from Triple A Fresno last night. Nine games with Fresno, a 3-2-9 ERA, one save and 17 strikeouts in 13 and two-third. Martin Prado, one for three, a single back in the fourth. 22 hits in seven and two-thirds. Wow. Martin on the homestand, four for 21. There's the strike, says Bill Miller, one and one. Martin looked good at the plate here last night, two for five, a single and a home run, his fourth of the year. Chopper up the middle, Crawford. Close play at first, but they get him. CenturyLink, your link to what's up next. The top of the order due up in the ninth as Trevor Cahill goes for the shutout. Pagan, Scudero, Sandoval. 1-0 D-backs as we go to the ninth.
Josh Wilson solo shot has given Trevor Cahill a one nothing lead as he heads to the ninth to try and close it out against the top of the Giants order. Pagan Scudero Sandoval here in the ninth. Trevor Cahill at 83 pitches. That is efficiency. 59 for strikes. Pagan single back in the first. One of only three Giants hits against Cahill so far. Trevor coming off a six pitch eighth inning. He has retired 14 of the last 15 he's faced. JJ ready just in case. Left hand side, that'll get out of play. Hey, FoxSportsArizona.com has all your online local sports coverage you can't find anywhere else with tonight's game report from Jack McGruder. How does being a Diamondback compare to being a rodeo clown? Cody Ross. Tell Cindy Brunson that. The extended interview is all online. Much more in an extended spot on FoxSportsArizona.com. Three and two now to Pagan. Pagan 0 for 5 last night, 1 for 3 tonight. Ooh. Two man game of keep away here. Three pitches that Cahill has thrown, and this is bad of reach to backstop. Yeah. That one reaches right field. Lead off man on for the Giants here in the ninth. And we'll see how short Kirk Gibson's fuse is, and apparently it's just burned out. Mm -hmm. Little surprise the way Cahill's been throwing ground balls tonight. Thought he might give him an opportunity to throw that double play grounder here, but instead he's going to go to his closer. So the tying run is on base with nobody outs. Trevor Cahill pitched an absolute gem here tonight. He leaves to a standing ovation. Pitching change all the way. We're coming up. Millions of fans and subscribe today. You can watch every out of market game live online or in HD quality with MLB.tv Premium. Visit MLB.tv today. It's baseball everywhere. Trevor Cahill responsible for the tying run on base with no outs here in the ninth inning and on for the Diamondbacks. JJ puts. JJ closed out the series finale against the Rockies for his fifth save of the year. Marco Scudero, one for three, singled back in the fourth. Pagan with good speed.
Pagan at first, three stolen bases. He's been caught twice this year. Last year, he was 29 of 36 on stolen base attempts. In fact, those 29 steals, the most by a Giant since Dave Roberts in 2007. He is the tying run with no outs here in the ninth. Base coach Tim Flannery with a long look into his skipper Bruce Bochy goes through a set of signs. I don't know that they'd be willing to give up Marco Scudero bat, especially given the numbers he has against JJ. Very similar to Martin Prado, handles the bat well. I think a hit and run is more likely. Excellent contact hitter, almost never strikes out. Pagan holds it first. There's the strike, one and one. is as usual the routine with these 2013 Diamondbacks every game is exciting quick move by JJ but Pagan is back Trevor Cahill responsible for that runner Scooter row seven for 25 over his last five games. Just a slight flinch over there by Pagan at first base. Well, part of the reason Gibby likes to have his pitchers hold that ball out there on a mound, occasionally that runner will start leaning ever so slightly towards second base, a tip off that he might be running on that pitch. There goes Pagan, swing and a miss. Here's the throw. He's in there. Fourth stolen base this season for Angel Pagan, tying run in scoring position now. Off speed pitch. That was the splitter from JJ. Got the swing and a miss at the plate. Anytime you get that off-speed pitch to the plate, it's going to take you just a little bit longer to get that ball down to second base. Perfect throw, but Pagan beats it ever so slightly. Boy, that throw was right there. Too. Right on the money. What a great throw. So a one and two count now to Scudero. Gone getting happy feet back there. And even with two strikes, I expect Scudero to try to move that ball to the right side of the field once again, much like Martin Prado has done when he's been in that number two spot in the lineup and the leadoff man gets to second base. Giants 0 for 5 tonight with runners in scoring position. Here's the 1 2. Chase it in the dirt. There's the strikeout. Nasty, nasty splitter that time in the dirt. Ten strikeout this season for Marco Scudero. We've seen two of them.
Here is the Panda now. He is one for three, single back in the fourth. He is 10 for his last 17. Out of play. Sandoval has hit safely in 20 of 26 games this year. And with runners in scoring position, he usually finds a way more often than not to drive them in. And that's why strike one is so important against Sandoval. You can expand the zone now, and with J.J., that usually means splitters in the dirt. So you can get him to chase a couple. Do you worry about that pitch? Getting away from Miggy with a tying run and scoring position. Uh, it's always a concern, but uh, when Miggy knows it's coming, he usually gets in pretty good blocking position. Keeps it from getting through. It wouldn't be enough to cause you to shy away from that pitch. Well, it shouldn't be because uh, if you shy away from that pitch because you're afraid it's going to go in the dirt, throw a fastball, this guy might uh, give yeah. the Giants a lead in a hurry. Came into tonight a 353 career hitter in this ballpark, and he's given the Giants a 2 1 lead. Splitter, but it just fluttered up there in the middle of the plate. Didn't take any kind of downward movement at all. Sandoval knew it the moment he touched it off. Here's Buster Posey with a 10 game hit streak on the line. He's 0 for 2 with a walk and a strikeout. The Panda power. That guy can flat out hit. Well, that really stinks for Trevor Cahill. What a night he had all for naught. Walks away with a no decision. Well, it was a split that J.J. threw to Francisco Cervelli in the ninth inning at Yankee Stadium that was gone for a home run. Brandon Belt did the same thing in San Francisco a few days later. And here tonight, Pablo Sandoval. Sergio Romo looms. Posey strikes out. Second strike out of the inning for J.J. Puts. Two down in the ninth. It's always easier said than done. I've mentioned it before when we played the Giants at AT&T Park last week. You don't have to throw him a strike to get him out, but he'll still get his base hits. He's a tremendous bad ball hitter, and when you make a mistake in the strike zone, he can hit it like he did tonight. Hunter Pence 0 for 3, struck out his last time up. And we weren't even sure, nor were the Giants, that Pablo Sandoval would be able to start this game. After he had to leave last night with elbow trouble. It's been a recurring problem for the Panda all spring long. Base hit.
the discussion there about what to do next. Matt Reynolds warms and warms quickly here. Well, Gregor Blanco, the first of three consecutive left handed hitters here in the six, seven, eight spot in the Giants lineup. Reynolds trying to get ready in a hurry. Miggy trying to stall for a little time out there at the mound. All depends on how quickly Matt Reynolds can get ready. He'll be looking for a sign from Miguel Montero here as to where we are in the progress, and Blanco will step in. Now, Kirk Gibson's going to come out and go to the left hander. So JJ puts. Exits here with two outs in the ninth. He'll be taking a slow walk, and Bill Miller is all over this. The plate umpire is quickly out there. There is the Diamondbacks bullpen against these Giants. And let's see if Kirk Gibson makes the move now or how long Bill Miller lets him wait. Gibby learned this particular strategy from Tommy Lasorda, who is the master of stalling for time out there, engaging the plate umpire in a discussion. The whole time, Matt Reynolds is down in the bullpen cranking it. There's the move. Reynolds is on. J.J. exits. Pitching change here at Chase. The Giants lead with two outs in the ninth, and the new pitcher for the Diamondbacks is indeed the left-hander, Matt Reynolds. Great numbers for Reynolds this season. He's been an unexpected surprise out of that Diamondbacks bullpen. Hunter Pence on first. Gregor Blanco, the hitter, he's 0 for 3. He has struck out and hit into a double play. In the air, right center. Pollock is under it. And that's the inning. Paul Goldschmidt, Cody Ross, and Miguel Montero, bottom nine. Diamondbacks need at least one.
the Diamondbacks will hit here in the bottom of the ninth, trailing the Giants 2-1. Sergio Romo is on. He earned his ninth save here last night. He is now 9 for 10 this year. And he has a 25-game scoreless streak against the Diamondbacks. New third baseman for the Giants, Joaquin Arias, fills in for Pablo Sandoval. Goldschmidt, Ross, Montero, 3-4-5 and five here in the ninth. Paul Goldschmidt, 0 for 3, has flied out three times. Goldie, 3 for 21 on the homestand. And plenty of left-handed pinch hit bats on the bench if needed. There's the strike on one. Trevor Cahill was absolutely brilliant tonight. Josh Wilson led off the eighth inning with a solo shot to make it one nothing D-backs. But the Giants have struck for two in the ninth. A two-run shot by Pablo Sandoval. That off J.J. Putz who came in for Cahill. After Pagan led off the ninth with a single against Trevor. And now the D Diamondbacks need to scratch and get one back here in the bottom of the ninth. Goldschmidt down 0-2. Bob, it looks like for Goldie, as we mentioned earlier in the game, they're working him down and away, 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 away. And in Romo, with that slider, it's a, it's a tough at bat here for Goldschmidt. Yeah, I mean, he really has the ability to expand that strike zone away from the right-handed hitters because of that flat slider. He's got great command of it. Going back out there again. Struck him out. I've seen that happen a couple of times to Goldie in the last few games. Just freezes on that two-strike fastball. Probably thinking just like we were that Romo's not going to throw him anything to hit. It's going to be something, a breaking ball off the outside corner. And Romo sneaks that fastball right over the heart of the plate. He struck out Miguel Cabrera with that exact same pitch to end the World Series. Here's Cody Ross, 0 for 2 with a walk. Cody, of course, has a flair for the dramatic, several dramatic moments, and home runs in Boston last year. Six of his homers either tied the game or gave the Red Sox the lead after the sixth inning. And there's the home run swing there, but it's 0-2. Romo will throw that slider at varying speeds, varying arm angles. Sometimes it's very flat. Other times it has some downward movement. He'll change speeds on it. Here comes another one. He lays off one and two. Sergio Romo unscored upon in 12 of his 14 appearances this year. I'm just going to say lately, Cody Ross uh, with two strikes has hit the ball to the opposite field pretty consistently, and that's where the Giants are working him away. Straight up in the air. Crawford. Two down. It's up to Miguel Montero. Miggy is one for three, single back in the fourth. He is four for 17 on the homestand. Including tonight, he's hit in six of the last eight games.
No one one. Giants steal one here, 2 1. They beat the Diamondbacks, Arizona and San Francisco, now identical in the National League West at 15 and 12. And Bob, this one hurt. Yeah, this one stung badly. I mean, Trevor Cahill couldn't have done much more than he did tonight. Unfortunately, J.J. Putz just wasn't up to the task tonight. This is going to be a tough one to swallow, but uh, you got to put it in the rearview mirror, come back out here tomorrow night and get after it. But there are a lot of positives to talk about as well. And for that, let's go to Joe and Jody. Yeah, thanks, guys. What started out.